Hey, this is Nick with Hawkins Precision. Today I'm gonna to walk you through how to install a set of our ultralight tactical scope rings. The information I'm gonna to give today is also applicable to our heavy tactical scope ring line. Let's get started. So we're mounting up a Collis 525 DLR and a set of 34 millimeter medium height ultralight tactical scope rings. These ones have our offset bubble level option. This is going on a Stiller Predator action and this rifle has an M24 contour barrel just in case you need any frame of reference for scope ring height. First thing I'm going to do is get the optics set up on the rifle where I like it. I know from experience I generally like the rear ring to be on the last or second to last slot on the Picatinny rail, but you may change that for your optic or for your preferences. Then what you're going to want to do is press the ring bases forward into your Picatinny rail and snug those down. It's also a good idea to have the half inch clap nuts on the opposite side of your ejection port. That way they do not interfere with any ejective cases. The nuts are actually designed to be on the left side of the action. So when you tighten them, the lug abutments press up against the front of the Picatinny rail, giving you a truer fit between mating surfaces. Now I'm gonna loosely place the scope ring caps onto the rings and work on setting my eye relief. If you have an adjustable cheek piece, set it in a position where you can comfortably lay your face on the rifle and see through your optic. A good tip here is to just rest your cheek on your rifle, close your eyes and then open them. If you can see through your optic, your cheek piece height is good. If not, just adjust that adjustable cheek rest until it's in a good spot for you. The second step in setting up your eye relief is removing any scope shadow. How you do that is you slowly move your scope forward and backward until there is no scope shadow. You will find when you're moving it back and forth, there's kind of a sweep spot in the middle where the eye box is centered up and you don't have any kind of half moons or, or any shadowing inside the scope. Once I hit that sweet spot, I like to snug down this non-level cap and kind of set that optic in the rings. Regardless if the scope is leveled or not, that way when I go back and level everything out, my eye relief is already good to go. You can also kind of get the scope level in this configuration too. That way when you're leveling everything out, you just have some minor adjustments to do at the end. Now with your eye relief set and your cheek piece height in the correct position, it's time to level this thing out. There's a lot of ways to do this, but having mounted probably hundreds of scopes, juggling rifles and optics around here at the shop, competition and hunting, I feel like this is the dead easiest way to do that. And that is to actually pull your scope off the rifle and mount it in an optics mounting system. That way you're not juggling three levels, a level on the barrel, a level in the action, sticking one on top of the scope. You can use a set fixture, level it out, use a plumb bob and a laser level, and you'll be good to go. Now this is a scope mounting fixture that we have here at the shop. It's not a product that we're currently selling, but the short action precision final scope level as well as the Badger Ordnance dead level systems are similar. This is just a tripod mounted leveling fixture that we've made. So next I'm gonna grab my fixture place it in my tripod and level it out with the ball head. Stick the scope on top, and this is where I'm either gonna grab a plumb bob or recently I've been using a laser level that I grabbed off Amazon, but you can get them at Home Depot or Lowe's. The reason I like the laser level, it has a very clear and defined line, so you can line up the horizontal stadia from your reticle to it very easily. Then all you need to do is loosen up those scope ring caps and pull out any can't out of your system. The next thing to do is level up your integrated reference level on the rings. So when you have the scope cap on your scope, it should be pretty snug. What you want to do is set it so the bubble is showing right in the middle of the two lines on the reference level. Then I'm going to run down one screw until it engages the cap. Then I'm going to go to the opposite side and run down another screw. And this is where you can kind of set your left and right limits and fine tune where that bubble is sitting between the two lines. Once you have that set up and you really don't need to torque it down all the way then, you can leave it and start running down the other opposite screws, snug them down in a crisscross pattern like you would tightening lugs on a tire, 
and you can get it all set up and ready to go for torquing. Our recommended torque settings for these rings is 25 inch pounds, but do use your scope manufacturer's recommended torque rating if it is different. And remember to use inch pounds, not foot pounds, which that has happened in the past. And we also don't recommend the use of Loctite, but if you would like to use it, we recommend to use blue Loctite and do use it sparingly. Then all that's left is remove the scope from the fixture, place it on your rifle, double check that eye relief, torque down the scope clamp nuts to 65 inch pounds, and then all you do is head to the range. All in all with this method, it should not take you long to have a nice leveled out mounted scope and a set of Hawkins Precision Scope Rings. If you have any questions about our rings, please be sure to leave a comment below, give us a call, shoot us an email. We're always happy to help. Thanks for watching.